All right, hello everyone and welcome to the next part of our base review run. We are here in Drucker County and Mike's Concrete is our next base. I was going to go to Knights, but I think I'm going to start with Mike's first and then we can look at Knight's Drive-In. Knight's Drive-In also is a six-man 1500 influence base. There are two on this map, but we will start here. Mike's Concrete, a roomy warehouse previously owned and operated by a local concrete company. I never would have guessed that. The generator still works. We might be able to get the machine shop up and running, and there's a massive tank we can keep fuel in. As I just said, it is six-man 1500 influence. It has a built-in sheltered beds and sheltered beds too, so that gives two beds and three beds respectively. A machine shop that I believe we have to fix based on what it said, which will take the place of a workshop. Maybe it'll be a level three. Finally, we have four parking slots and a huge fuel storage as well as a backup generator. We're probably gonna have to fix it as well, but we shall see in a moment. I will claim it, and when we come back from black, it will be built up. All right, everyone, we are back at Mike's Concrete. It is all built up, so let's take a look at everything here. So as I said previously, four parking spots, and the huge fuel storage, which we'll look at real quick, because it just adds plus 100 max fuel storage, which is just stupid. I've never had anywhere near that amount, but eh, whatever. Someone might use it. Then you have a standard command center, standard storage, which sounds weird. You would think that you would start out with at least like a level two or a level three or something, since that's technically like a warehouse. Oh, cool. We have a zombie threat. Uh, we'll finish the built-ins first. Then you have the machine shop, which is the same as a level 3, I do believe. It might be a level 2. But you get a plus 25% build action speed with power, plus 1 materials, and then I have a salvage furnace, so minus 1 fuel per day on that. Then we will look at the generator. It gives you plus 5 morale per person for the electric light. It as long as you have power, or I guess it give you power. That's weird. Anyways, provide power, minus one fuel per day. Oh, okay, so if you have fuel, then it will give you that morale boost. Um. Yeah, so these zombies are about to get owned. Oh, no. Shoot his face. Oh, crap. That was his arm. Like, bruh, just hit him in the head. You ain't got to blow his whole arm off. Hang tough, people. We can do it. I was actually kind of hoping that this would happen while I was building up the entire base. Because this time, instead of turning off the recording, while the building was going on, I left it on just in case so that if we got another max level siege, you could watch just how ridiculous my community is when it comes to these sieges because they just absolutely annihilate we can anything Thank goodness. all right and back to our regularly be quiet back to our regularly scheduled programming now then we went over the backup generator so long as you have fuel in storage then you will get the plus five morale now, you can also use it as a white noise generator, which will reduce the zombie threat, and it also improves your utility skills. That is it for built-in, so now we will look at the small building facilities, which you get five of. So, inside, these two were sheltered beds which neither of these, the backup generator or the machine shop, I didn't have to repair either one. So, I don't know if that's another glitch, because I felt like the machine shop was broken. But, whatever. So, I put an infirmary inside, as I always do, and the fighting gym inside, as I always do. 
Now that left me with a third one indoors because I didn't have to build a workshop because it's already built in, which is quite handy. So I just put a shooting range in, gives you some extra stamina, and I plugged a comfy chair to give me some extra morale. Fighting Jim has my free weights as normal and biochems on the infirmary as normal. That is how I built the three indoors and then outside since I don't really need anything else and at this point in the game I would be just trying to simply build up influence so I could buy all the supplies that I need from my trade depot that we'll go over in a minute. I put two stills so I can literally run both of these at the same time. Craft beer on that one that's four and eight and then I can call in a trader, buy out their rucksacks, sell them the beer that I made and I will come out making I believe a profit off of that even if they have three rucksacks I should come out with a profit which is quite awesome and will build up supplies very quickly now you could obviously use one of these for a garden or something of such whatever you would like to build really and truly I mean, if you want to put a freaking toilet, put a toilet, and it makes no difference to me. This is just my personal setup of how I have actually built this base. I did this on a Nightmare Zone when I was going through beating all of the maps. But anyways, I digress once again. Next, we will go to our large facilities. So as always, I have my trade depot it is pretty standard for me to build one just so that I can keep my supplies up and my influence high, especially when I'm doing these uh, base guides where it costs so much influence to get into these bases. I have to keep my influence up in the high up in the sky so that I can continuously do that without having to slow down my progression. And then here, not for any particular reason, I just built a sniper tower, more so to show people who may not have seen it before. So it is the builder's item, so you do have to have a builder hero in place. But the sniper tower will give you armed guard and an additional armed guard, so long as you have ammo in storage and two armed people. Then a dedicated sniper, which will be a radio unlock for sniper cover, which I will show you in a moment. It gives you a permanent minus four siege threat, but it does cost one ammo per day and one material per day. And it gives you a plus 500 passive scouting. So it's it can be very very handy mostly for the radio call-in which we will do here in a second and then if you spend more ammo now this does go up as you go up in difficulty but it will give you a minus six siege threat and on standard it only costs two ammo i'm pretty sure on lethal it costs either four or six i'm gonna lean towards six but i built that just so that if you have never seen it before you can now say that you have at least seen it. Now then, All right. I'm heading out for a bit. let's see what's over here. There's a juggernaut right there. So we're going to run over here. I will crouch down and press sniper support. And I will aim at him and I will press the button. And they will start snipifying him. At least they should. Let's see how well it works. Oh, yep, he's taking damage. I was curious if I could see them actually sniping at him. But as you can tell, it's actually beating him up a little bit. He's starting to... Oh, there he goes. He get, went down. And there he goes. He is dispatched. Nice and easy. And that is one of the benefits. I never looked in this truck. That is one of the benefits of the sniper tower is that call-in. If you get in a bind and you have to absolutely take out a juggernaut, 
it, it can greatly increase your chances of doing so and getting out of there alive. So, for instance, if your car blows up, which happens to me quite often because I drive and play like a dummy, then you can use that call-in to take out pretty much everybody in your vicinity and even the big guys. So if you can handle all of the little annoying zombies, they can take out a juggernaut, they can pop screamers. I've yet to see it beat a feral, but I'm pretty sure they could probably get at least a couple good shots in on a feral. But we will call it an episode. That is Mike's Concrete. Overall, I do like this base quite a lot. It is more centralized than the other bases just because it's on this main little highway here that can lead you all the way around. And then it has this quick little cut through to get down to this bottom area and you can cut back over here as well which there is a ton of loot right here in the middle. But if you followed progression, Wally's would probably be your second base. You probably have looted a lot of this by the end of it, especially on a higher difficulty. So far, Mike's is the place I would go. You can build a tremendously powerful base here. I enjoy it quite a bit. And I hope you've enjoyed my opinions on it. If you have, please like and subscribe. Drop some comments down below. I've appreciated everyone and your time. And as always, I'm the ADHD Gamer, and I will see you in the next one.